man, you're walking through the storm, you're dealing with a, a battle, you're dealing with a situation you can't handle right now, just take hold of the hand of the Savior. He's the anchor of peace. I want to continue this uh, summer sermon series called Better You, Unlock the Greatness in You. And today, I want to focus on putting your hand in the hand of God. All the songs have kind of been talking about that, putting your hand in the hand of God. As Andrew started the service, talking about being on the right team, having home field advantage. We have home field advantage when we put our hand in the hand of the Savior. And if you'll put your hand in his hand, he can unlock the greatness that's inside of you. It's like putting the key in the ignition. When you do that, you can power up the power of an engine. When you put the right key in the right lock, you can unlock the potential. When we put our hand in the hand of the Savior, he has the ability then to unlock the greatness that's inside of you. And he says this in John chapter 15, verse number 5 through 7. Look at these scriptures, John 15. Verse 5 through 7, it'll be on the screen. You can follow along your Freedom Church app sermon notes. But John 15, 5 through 7 says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Everybody say much fruit. You will bear much fruit. Not just some fruit, but much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you remain in me, or sorry, if you don't remain in me, you'll be like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. See, the key to God unlocking greatness inside of us is make sure we have our hand in his hand. Make sure we're remaining in him, that his words are remaining in us, that there's a constant, continual connection. If we have that connection, then he can continue to pour his life into us and unlock the greatness that's in us. Otherwise, when we are disconnected, we're like a branch that's thrown away, withers, thrown into the fire, and burned. There's no potential for greatness. Here not too long ago, all our grandkids were over at the house, and uh, they were all taking turns as I was grabbing their hands and they would face me, I'd grab their hands and then they start walking up with their feet, walking up my feet or walking up my legs and flip over backwards. You, everybody, parents, grandparents, you've all done that. Well, River, uh, she came running up to me and she grabbed my hands uh, without uh, any warning, just grabbed my hands and started climbing up my legs. And she got halfway up, she was upside down, holding on to my hands and I I just had this fear. If she lets go, she's falling. You know, she's going to land on top of her head. So I quickly put her down, and she didn't understand what was going on because we've been playing this game over and over. But I put her down, and she had this confused look. I said, hold on, hold on. Let me take your hand. I got hold of her hand. I said, now climb. Climb all you want. I'll swing you around. I'll... There's a big difference in us having hold of God's hand and God having hold of your hand. There's a big difference. And when you've got your hand in his hand, he's got you. And he's not going to let you fall. I believe that we need to keep our hand in the hand of the Savior. That's what unlocks the greatness that's inside each and every one of you. Apart from him, we can do nothing. I was recently, I read this story, and I, it caught my attention. I've read some like it before, but it was talking about the power of draft horses. And I didn't understand the term draft horse, but this is what they look like. The draft horses, they're used to plow. They're used to haul large loads, heavy loads. But the story went on. The article said that the draft horse can pull, and it probably weighs somewhere between two and 3,000 pounds itself, but it can pull 8,000 pounds individually. Now, normal math would say that two together would be able to pull 16,000, right? But no, that's not it. Whenever they're teamed together, they can pull at least 24,000, three times the potential because of teamwork. You say, where does that additional strength come from? It comes from teamwork. It's invisible, it's intangible, but it happens when two come together, they become better than they could on their own. But then the article went on and said that if these draft horses are trained properly and they work together, they can actually pull 36 thousand pounds four times their weight I thought where does that come from it's the power of teamwork when you put your hand in the hand of God it allows you to be teamed up with the one who is able to do more than what you could ask or imagine 
allow you to go further than you could ever dream of. You just got to make sure that you're part of the team, part of his team. And then, of course, there is a, a lesson there for all of us to learn that we can do more together than we could on our own. In fact, the same principle is applied to the birds or the ducks or the geese that fly in the V formation. They fly in the V formation, and the one that is the point takes the brunt of the resistance and creates a wind draft for the others to fall in, making it easier for them to fly. When it gets tired, the one at the point will then rotate to the back. They continue taking turns while the rest of them are honking and quacking and saying, come on, you can do it, keep it going. But to fly in the V formation allows the birds or ducks or geese to be able to fly 70% further together than they can on their own. It's the power of teamwork. And here's the principle of God unlocking greatness that's in us that we can never tap into our own. You have to have your hand in the hand of God. you got to be teamed up with God. In fact, look at this, Isaiah 41, verses 9 through 10. Isaiah 41, it says, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners. I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. Somebody needs to hear that today. Do not fear, I'm with you. Do not be dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So you've got to have your hand in his hand in order for him to strengthen you, to help you, and uphold you, to lift you up. When he lifts you up, he's unlocking the greatness that is inside of you. That's another key for God unlocking the greatness in our life. Listen, if you'll put your life in God's hand, you'll see his hand in your life. It doesn't matter what part of your life may seem out of control right now. It could be your personal life, personal choices. It could be in business. It could be in your family. It could be in your marriage. It could be with your children. It could be with your health. But you put everything into God's hand and you'll see his hand in everything. You've just got to be willing to commit to him. Now, this is what I know. Most of us probably don't have as big of a problem putting things in God's hands. We'll do that. I think most of us have learned how to do that. You know what most of us have a problem doing? Leaving it in God's hands. You know why? Because he starts taking us on pathways that we're not comfortable with. He starts leading us down ways that we get a little concerned about, maybe a little fearful of, things we don't understand, things we can't comprehend, things we can't explain, things that are out of our comfort zone. But he's not worried. He's got you by the hand. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to help you. He's going to uphold you. But we get a little freaked out. And so when we're not really sure what's happening, we're not sure where he's going, we're not sure what he's doing, we take it back into our own care and we try to handle it ourselves. And that's when we end up failing. That's when we falter. That's when we have trouble. The only way to fully trust God in everything is to fully trust God in everything. That's why Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your path. Look at this next scripture in Isaiah 66, 2. It says, My hands have made both heaven and earth. With God's hands, he made both heaven and earth, and everything in them are mine. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will bless. Again, he will unlock the greatness in you. He will bless those who have humble and contrite hearts, who tremble at my word. When we're humble and when we're contrite, well, how do we do that? That's a sign of surrender. That's a sign of trust. When we trust God with our lives, when we trust Him with our future, when we trust Him with our children, when we trust Him with our marriage, when we trust Him with every part of our life, we're humbling ourselves. That's a humble and a contrite heart. It's only then that God can unlock the greatness in you. So how do you do that? You do that by trusting Him through His Word. What does this say? This is the instruction manual for life. Trust His Word. Obey His Word. It's one thing to believe it, It's another thing to trust it and walk it out. You see, but if you're going to trust him, then you're going to have to trust him fully. And if you trust him fully, I promise you, he will unlock greatness in you that you can never, ever tap into any other way. But you can't take hold of God's hand until you let go of what's in yours. You can't take hold of God's hand until you let go of what's in yours. 
There's a lot of us want to hold on to things before we take hold of his hand. We want, we want to hold on to hurts. Somehow or another, we feel like that if we let go of that hurt, then somehow or another, we're, we're saying it's okay that that person hurt me. That's a lie. That's not what letting go of hurts. That's not what forgiveness, that's not what moving on means. In fact, the opposite is true. When you choose to hold on to a hurt, you're allowing that person to continue hurting you. When you let go of it, you're cutting the cord and you're refusing to allow them to hurt you anymore. That's when you finally get victory and get free from it. It's crazy, though, how we continue to hold on to the hurts, thinking somehow we're going to make them pay for it. But we're the ones paying for it. We pay for it emotionally. We pay for it mentally. We pay for it every time we allow that rage to rise up inside of us. What are you holding on to that you need to let go of? Could it be hurts? Could it be unforgiveness? Pain from the past? Some of us, we have, we have questions. We don't understand. Why did somebody die and God not heal them when he healed somebody else? We have questions. Why, why, where was God when I was being abused, when I was being uh, taken advantage of, when I was you know, alone and abandoned? Where, where was God then? And we have these questions. We have this confusion, and we can't let it go. But you're going to have to learn to let those things go in order to fully put your hands in the hand of God. There's a lot of us, we make these deals with God. Well, if, if, if I could only understand this, then I would trust you. That's not the way it works. If God, if you'll just answer this, then, then I'll trust you. You might be able to bargain with God. I don't know. I'm not God. He can do whatever he wants. But that's ordinarily not the way he works. We have things that we don't let go of. And so we refuse to fully embrace God's hand. You think about the hands of Jesus. His hands were rough, yet still tender enough to touch the little children that came to him. His hands were, were strong, yet still gentle enough to be able to lay hands on the blind people. His hands were strong. Yet with them, he still raised the dead, and still healed the sick. His hands were scarred even before the nails in his hands. Being a carpenter, his hands were scarred, yet with them, he still healed the sick. He still ministered to people. His hands, they had to be calm and steady as he reached out and stretched them towards the raging storm on the Sea of Galilee and said, peace be still. These hands, those are the hands I'm asking you to trust those are the hands I'm asking you to put your hands into his hands his hands convey strength and compassion and when we put our hands in his hands we tap into that same strength and compassion I want that in my life I want you to have that in your life look at these two last scriptures as the musicians come back up here Psalms 104 verse 28 says this that when God opens his hand, we're filled with his goodness. When God opens his hands, we're filled with his goodness. Therefore, I want to be right where his hands are. I want my hand in his hand. Psalms 145 verse 16 says, You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. God has good things in store for us. His hands are merciful. His hands are compassionate. You just got to get your hand into his hand. There's a poem that was made famous back in the early 1900s when King George VI, I think, read it at a Christmas banquet. It was written early in 1900. It's called The Gate of the Year. And just a portion of it, it talks about stepping into the new year and facing unknown, facing the things we haven't faced before. And here's just a portion of it. I think I've got it on the screen. It says, I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Think about it. Put your hand in the hand of God. That's better to you than a light safer to you than a known way well how could that be how is it that that could be better for us is it possible 
Am I back on? Is it possible that whenever we have a light and we're able to see the way, we're able to see what's ahead, we're able to see what's in store that maybe it might frighten us, maybe we might act differently than we would if we saw what was ahead. How many of you have ever been holding a child or holding a hand, a child by the hand and maybe you're going to a playground and they get to the playground and they see the playground. It's finally in sight. They're close enough. They break from your hand and they start running towards the playground. Or maybe it's they see a parent who's coming to pick them up or maybe it's a, a grandparent they haven't seen in a while. You're walking along with this child in hand and then all of a sudden they see a person. They see an object. They see something, and they break free from your hand and they start running. When they start running, they throw all caution to the wind. I mean, they could be running across a street, across a, 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 a sidewalk. They could be running right into harm's way. They would never see it because they're focused on that one thing and they just go for it. That's how accidents happen. I think that could happen to us. If God would allow us to see what's ahead, we might let go of his hand and start running just fully embracing what's ahead and get ahead of ourselves and run into harm's way. Or it may have the other reaction. We may see something and think, this scares me to death. There's no way I could do this and turn around and go back. That's why it's better to have hold of God's hand rather than for him to give us a light to see the way because I don't know that our reaction would be proper. I don't know that we could handle everything that God has in store for us. I can remember when Hunter was just a little toddler. Our, our youngest daughter. My grandmother had just passed away. And we had gone to the graveside. We were having this service there at the graveside. We were under a little tent. And the actual grave was just off to the side. And it was covered by some green astroturf. And I'd walked over just a few moments before the actual graveside service and I walked over to stand and look at my grandfather's tombstone that was right there next to where my grandmother was to be buried and I was just looking at the gravestone and I was remembering my grandfather He's, I spent summers working on his farm with him and as I was standing there my daughter Hunter saw me and started running towards me she ran right across the green astroturf not knowing that there was a six foot deep grave underneath and her weight took her straight to the bottom <laughs> there's my little daughter this was awkward she didn't completely get everything that was going on at that time thankfully but I had to lay down on the dirt and reach down in she's standing up she's crying and I'm saying just reach up take hold of my hand as I laid down and got hold of her pulled her up to safety I realized that sometimes when we don't know what our surroundings are when we don't know what's in front of us we take off and we just run right in to our own grave sometimes keep your hand in God's hand keep trusting him each and every day back in 1991 there was a operation that was performed on a man by the name of Virgil and his doctor Dr. Oliver Sacks said that for 45 years Virgil had functioned effectively as a sightless person but he was able to perform the surgery and suddenly Virgil was able to see but he was overwhelmed by the torrent of impressions that were bombarding his brain he was unable to process all of the images and it caused him to be able to fall into a state of disorientation and listlessness and just misery he couldn't handle it it caused him to shrink back rather than embrace what was in front of him and ironically just a few years later he caught an infection that took his sight away again but he welcomed the darkness in fact the doctor said now at last Virgil is allowed to not see to not see 
Now that seems odd to us, but for him to not see was better because he wasn't able to handle all that he was seeing. I believe sometimes God keeps us from seeing certain things because we wouldn't be able to handle it. We wouldn't be able to process it. So you know what he says? Take me by the hand. That's why we're called to walk by faith, not by sight. See, sometimes we say, God, I won't trust you unless you tell me what's ahead. God says, you couldn't handle it if I told you. So take me by the hand and trust me, I'm going to lead you through securely, safely, successfully, if you'll just trust me. Can you trust him today? Can you put your hand in his hand? Don't you believe the God who made the heavens and the earth, who wants to pour out good things from his hand to you, that he knows what's best? And if we'll just trust him, we'll see his greatness unleashed in our lives. I believe that God's compassion for us is oftentimes demonstrated in the fact that he doesn't allow us to see what's ahead. In other words, he says, keep hold of my hand and I'll take you there. See, I hold Starla's hand all the time. I hold her hand not because I'm trying to keep her from harm, not because she can't handle herself, not because I'm trying to keep her from running away, although she's been prone to think about that a time or two. You know why I hold her hand? Because I love her. And it's a way for me to express my love to her when I hold her by the hand. I don't even have to say anything. Now, don't get me wrong. I tell her I love her every day. Most days I ask her, did I tell you I love you today? Did I show you that I love you today? But I hold her hand because I love her. It's a way that I express my love to her. God wants to hold your hand so he can communicate his love to you. He wants to hold your hand so that he can remove your fears. He wants to hold your hand so he can unleash the greatness in you. He wants to hold your hand because he knows what's best for you. He wants to hold your hand because you're his child. He wants to hold your hand because you're his beloved. He wants to hold your hand because he cares about you. He wants to hold your hand because you are awesome in his eyes. You're his child. You're his son. You're his daughter. He's not trying to hold you back. He's trying to unlock greatness in you by holding on to your hand. So let go of whatever it is that you have to let go of and put your hand in the hands of God and trust him today. Can somebody say amen? Come on, do me a favor. Stand to your feet all over this place. As we get ready to sing this song one more time, if you're here today, I want to just take this moment while we're singing this song. If you're here today and you say, you know what? I got some stuff I need to let go of. I got some things I need to get rid of. I got some things that are holding me back. Maybe it's doubts, questions, hurts, fears, whatever it is that you feel like you, something, when I was talking earlier about you letting go of what's in your hand in order to take hold of what's in God's hand, you knew I was talking to you. I'm going to ask you just to turn that over to God. Just give it to Him. Turn it over to Him. And I'm going to invite you to take a step out from where you are. Just bring it to this altar. Just give it to God. Just turn it over to Him. I promise in doing that, you're going to let go of that pain. You're going to let go of that hurt. You're going to let go of that doubt. You're going to let go of that question that's been haunting you. And in complete surrender and trust, you're just going to say, God, I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my family. I trust you with my business. I trust you with my children. I trust you with my past. I trust you with my future. And if you're ready to put that trust in him and say, God, i got to get rid of this stuff. I give it to you. How many of you say, Kendo, you're talking to me right now? Come on, you're talking to me right now. Come on, just lift up your hand. Hold it up. Hold it up. Thanks. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do me a favor. Just bring it to this altar. And give it to him right now. Come on, just bring it to this altar. Walk up here in the front and say, God, I give it to you. I put my hand in your hands. I let go of all the things that I've been holding on to, all the stuff I've been trying to figure out. I give it to you today. Come on, just come on. Bring it here. Come on. a victory that you can't get any other way.
leave this place. Remain right here in the front, if you will. If you've never really fully surrendered your life to Christ, and I'm talking to people all over this room and even those watching online right now, if you've never fully surrendered your life to Christ, you're never going to know what it is to have God hold your hand. You're never going to know what it is for His greatness to be unleashed in you. The only way to experience the greatness of God is to have the greater one living in you. And I'm going to encourage you to invite Him into your life to be the Lord of your life today. It means you stop doing things your way and you start doing things God's way. You ask Him to forgive you of your sin, be the Lord of your life. And the Bible says, according to Romans chapter 10, that if we confess that with our mouth and we believe it in our heart, that we can access new life in Christ. I'm going to ask you to pray this very simple prayer with me all over this room. We're all going to pray together so no one prays alone. But if you're here today and you say, you know what, I'm ready to start a new life in Christ, or I've wandered away from my faith and it's time to come back home, you're ready to come back home. Pray this from the depths of your heart. Let God create a new start in you today. Say this, everyone. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him some praise right now. Listen to me. You say, can a simple prayer like that change everything? Brother, it can change everything. It changes everything. You just got to continue to walk it out. And if you need help walking out your faith in Christ today, then I encourage you, before you walk out of this room, stop by the I have decided wall. Sign it. If you made a decision to follow Christ, get over there and sign that wall. Date it today. You decided to follow Jesus. And we also have a book we'd love to put in your hand entitled Now What? It'll help you with your next step in following Christ. Listen, this is going to be a great week for every one of us. You're going to see new possibilities, new opportunities. You keep your hand in his hand. He's going to take you to places you never would have gone on your own. Get ready. Get ready for him to unlock greatness in your life like you've never seen before. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you great, great peace. I love you guys. Have a blessed week, everybody. Thank you.